All right, ladies and gentlemen, fellow coders, let's dive into the next one. Uh, in this one, we are going to uh, expand on our um, uh, <clears throat> service here. At least I think it's going to be expanding on the service um, that we're using to pull uh, our endpoint for data. So basically, this data right now, <clears throat> we are uh, mapping it as a, uh, well, we're getting it as a response entity, which is fine. It's a response that we're getting back, uh, but it's being mapped, the body of it is being mapped to just a string. Um, and that's not helpful, right? Basically, this is the string that we're getting back, which is this big long thing. Um, and that's literally all we have, just a one big long string with a bunch of words in it. So we need to be able to uh, parse this string up um, so that it's actually something that we can use, so it's something helpful. So uh, let's do that. <clears throat> so we need to look at the string that we're getting back, right? Um, and more, more importantly, instead of just saying uh, response and printing the response out, we want to say, say response dot uh, body or get body, right? So that's really more appropriately the, the string that we're getting back is the body. So we'll fire that up and we'll grab a copy of the string. There we go. Then I'll stop it because it doesn't need to keep running. Um, so here's a string, boom. So what I like to do is this, this response is a JSON response, right? A JSON, it's, it's no, uh, notable because it uses the you know, curly, curly brackets and uh, double quotes and square brackets. Um, those things together are you know, a telltale sign of a, a response being JSON as opposed to something like XML. Right, XML uses uh, angled brackets and like tags almost. Um, so what I like to do with a JSON response is to go to the JSON parser. So you go open up a browser, JSON parser, parser, I type in. And uh, you know, you can go to any JSON parser is fine. Uh, I don't know. I go to this one, um, which is JSON parser online FR. Paste in your JSON response here or your JSON um, uh, string here and it will parse it up for you to give you uh, an idea of what the structure should look like or does look like. Uh, can I zoom this in anyway? Uh, colorize, top to bottom, show, blah, blah, blah. Minify, uh, <clears throat> I guess I can just zoom in with my browser like this. I know some people are like to watch these things on their, their phones or something. So it's like if you're watching on your phone, well, don't do that. But anyway, um, I'm trying to help you out. So uh, we start with um, an object, right? So curly brackets mean objects. So basically, the the this entire thing is an in, is made up of an entire object. So typically, when we start with mapping this stuff out, uh, and this is sort of the boring stuff, but it's it's necessary. Um, you 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 have a um, when the whole thing is wrapped in an object, which typically it is. Um, then you are looking at mapping something like, a, or using a, a name like uh, response or something along those lines. So um, uh, usually it's request and response. So if you're sending a request and you need to uh, map the request to an object, you would have a, re a request package. Um, and then for responses, you have a response package, which could be in the web package as well. So we can have a web and then um, request response. It could be in DTO request response. You know. It's, uh, you know, I might put it in the DTO package. Um, so in DTO, we have dot request. And then in DTO, we can have response. Um, a response. And uh, when we send a request, actually, we're already sort of sending the request, are we not? Uh, where is that happening? That's in the, this is the service. We're doing get for entity. So that's the request itself. Um, and I guess, yeah, so yeah, we're not sending a request other than just an HTTP uh, get request. So we don't actually have to map any sort of object for it. So we probably are not gonna need a, a request full uh, package here. So, but just so you know, this is what you may do if you have, uh, if you if if this here, or rather something uh, to the right of it would have to be an actual object that we're sending, then you would have like a request uh, folder uh, package for stuff. Um, but yeah, we're not sending an object. We're just querying a URL and that's it. We are getting a response object back though. Right now we have it mapped as a string. That's not helpful. So let's create a response uh, new uh, class. Let's use a record again, because I think we can get away with that. Um, and we can essentially have the, uh, you know, call it course report API response, right? So the course report API response is made up of what? Well, it is this entire thing from the opening bracket all the way to this closing bracket down here. So it's everything in between. So what is inside of it? Well, there's a thing called matches, right? And matches has a square bracket. Square brackets map to lists, 
right? So we've sort of seen this before in our mock, uh, what you call it, uh, mock controller. We're, we're already sort of, right, it's, we're doing this already. It's a string, right, is the matches. And then we have uh, a list. So it's a map of, well, I say not a map of, but this will be an object of, but they use map in this case. Um, the matches is the string and the list is the object or is the value. So um, the key, sorry, the key is match and the value is a list of something. So uh, let's go back to this. So this course report API response represents this curly bracket here. Matches we can put as uh, something. So we can say private something matches. Now the question mark, that's not proper syntax. I'm putting a question mark in there as a placeholder for what we'll actually put in there. Um, but this is matches, right? So that that matches this, right? This key. This is a key and the value is an array. So matches is an array of something. So this question mark, uh, sorry, I should say a list of something. It's a list of something. Again, question mark. In this case, you can use a question mark because that's generics. But anyway, uh, again, I'm putting a question mark in here because what is it? Well, it's an array of, what would you call all these things? Because it's an array of objects. See, array, bracket, uh, the square bracket means array. Curly bracket means object. Just like this one up here meant object, this one here means object. So if we close these, these down, you see we have multiple um, plus signs with multiple objects. So it's a list of objects. But what are these objects? right? We could just say list of objects, right? But this is not proper. We don't want to just use object. We want to have something more specific if we can be more specific. So um, we can be more specific because this is literally this guy right here, match DTO. It's a full name, full name, phone number, phone number, uh, created at, uh, where is it? Created at, uh, although this is a string, so we need to modify this a bit, but let's use this match DTO. Um, at least I believe I want to use the match DTO. So it's a list of match DTO objects, right? And let me hover over this and import the uh, list, the Java util list. Okay, uh, why is this upset? Instance field, oh right, so I'm in a record. Uh, sorry, my, uh, my bad. I was creating it like it was a, uh, a regular Java class. Uh, my apologies. So in a record, we don't need the private. We just need to grab this, the uh, the type and the uh, variable name and paste it inside of the round brackets. Apologies. Uh, so there you go. It's a list of matches. And then, um, why is this not flipping over? And then the next one, so we've done this. So we have an object, which is our course report API response, is this object here. Within this object, uh, within this, uh, a course report API response. Within it, we have the list match list of match DTOs, which is right here. It's a list of match DTOs. This bracket, this curly bracket represents a match DTO. And then afterwards, we have another string. And this string represents an object of something. Now, in this case, we haven't mapped out this object yet, so we'll need to, but it's a, uh, uh, this is not a string, sorry. The key is meta, which means that's the name of the uh, variable, put a comma here. Uh, but then we don't know the type. What is the type here? It's a type uh, that represents meta. So this is um, the metadata, I'm assuming. So it's, it's like metadata DTO, I guess we could call it. So let's go to our DTO and let's add a new, another new record, or record. We'll call this the metadata DTO. Okay, this, this bracket here will represent the metadata DTO, which we then, we can leave it blank for now in here and, and put back in our, uh, our thing where this question mark placeholder is, we can put metadata DTO, right? We can save that um, and then it probably has to be imported. So import this guy. So now we have compiling code here, uh, although is it, it's, it's saying what? Create a type parameter, no. Um, so this metadata DTO is here. Um, but it, there's nothing inside of it. If I control click on this, uh, there's nothing inside of this metadata meta data DTO. That's hard to say. So then what is inside of this metadata DTO? Okay, let's have a look. So inside of this is a string, which is the key, and the value is another object. So we have an object within an object. That's perfectly fine. We can have that. So let's create that object. 
We'll call this the pagination DTO, right? You don't have to get too crazy with your naming. So Java class, we'll make it a record and call it pagination DTO. The pagination DTO has what? Well, this is the pagination, pagination DTO. It has four properties, current page, total objects, total. So anyway, let me copy these because there's no more objects being nested in here. Let's paste them in here. Um, so current page is over here. We see this is the, the, the value of current page. The values type is a string. I see two double quotes, which means it's a string. So we can call this string current page. Okay. Now remember, this is not proper Java naming conventions for variables. So we need to put JSON property and call it current underscore page so that we can rename this to be a capital P like that. Okay. This is how, this is how you, it's boring, but this is how you map data. Um, it, the, the, the structure of the data is important. Um, with all this stuff. Now this guy is not a string. You see, there's no double quotes around it. If it was double quote, double quote, then this would be a string type. But I don't see that. I see the raw number four, which probably means it's like an integer, right? So we can call this integer. Okay. And again, total objects. It's not gonna be called total objects. The, the name of the variable, we'll call it total objects with a capital O. And then we'll use JSON property with total objects with the underscore so that we map it correctly. Okay, total pages. Again, number one does not have quotes on it, so it's probably just an integer, integer. Um, did I copy total pages? Copy, JSON property, paste, remove the uh, double quotes, change it to a capital P. You see how boring this is. Now this one is a string, oops. This one is a string. So string, copy this so that I can put it as a JSON property, paste, remove the string, whoops, make it capital P, boom. Voila, so now we have a pagination DTO. And let's go back, step back. Where, does, where is the pagination DTO? Well, it's nested inside of the metadata DTO. So we go to the uh, metadata DTO here, metadata DTO. And inside of it is pagination DTO. And we call it pagination. There's a reason I'm calling it pagination because that's what the key is here. It's looking for the key. If I call this pagination DTO here, it wouldn't map it properly because the, the variable name does not match the key here. So if I named it differently, I'd have to use JSON property, right? And I'd have to call it pagination. So if you want to change the variable name of the thing, you can, you just have to, make sure that it maps appropriately because it's going to be looking for this. The JSON property is looking for this, right? And if you do not specify a JSON property, it's going to look for this as the name, but pagination DTO is not here. So it wouldn't find a match and all this data would not be pulled in. It wouldn't match the data. So we need to make sure that that variable name matches if it, if it can. So there we go, we've mapped out all of that stuff. And now if all goes well in the service, we don't have to do string anymore. We can now use the uh, course report API response, right? Because the course report API response is this guy up here, this first bracket, okay? So the course report API response is actually what the response entity will bring, will set, will give you back. And over here, that's, you have to do the same thing. Course report API response is the returning type. And then if we did our job correctly, it should map it. And, and when it prints it out on this line, it won't print out this anymore. It's going to print out some, uh, uh, something slightly different, I think. So let's run this. Hopefully there's no errors. Did I do it right the first time around? Please. It did. Nice. So now it does this. Okay. So all that data is still there. It's just um, mapped slightly differently in, in terms of we have a hierarchy or whatever of, of, of Java objects now. So... Last thing I want to do, well, I guess we don't have time in this one, but in the next video, I want to change this to not be a string because I want this to be treated like an actual date um, and perhaps other things too. Phone number, I guess that could be a string. Experience, availability, location. Oh, yeah, so just this needs to change. So we'll do that in the next one because, hey, uh, dates and stuff always are a pain in the butt. So looking forward to seeing you in the next one.